I have a question for you. Do you believe that the future is friendly, or do you believe it's unfriendly? You said yes two times. <laughs> Albert Einstein once said that the most important question a person can ask herself is whether she believes that the universe is friendly or unfriendly. Because what we believe about the universe directs how we will use our technology, our scientific discoveries, and our natural resources. I will argue that the exact same is true for the future. That what we believe about the future determine our visions, and that our visions determine our strategies, which again, determine our actions. And knowing this, I'm not especially proud of what I'm going to tell you now. I've been anxious. I've been scared. I've been fearful about the future. It was not until recently that I discovered that this fear that I have been with was actually related to the future. And when I saw this, I of course started to question, why? What happened? I mean, I'm a futurist, for God's sake, and I've always been so super excited about the future. So why was I now fearful? Why did I believe the future to be an unfriendly place. And what I found was that my lens had somehow shifted. I had started to almost obsess with technology. I've been starting, starting to buy into this notion that, technology, that artificial intelligence and other exponential technologies, they will just take off and we don't know where to. We just have to prepare and accept that the complexity of tomorrow will surpass our intelligence, and that's just what it is. Half of the jobs that we have today will be gone in a few decades. That's just the premise. And what I also found was that this, this was the message I've been passing on to my audience, and to my clients. About a month ago, I spent five in ten days with these young students discussing the future. And I could recognize this fear that I had in their eyes. I could almost hear them say, I'm not good enough. I will have no value in the future. I don't have what is needed. That fear is not the right foundation for building the future is one thing. Another th thing is that technology is so much more than this. And also, the future is about much more than technology. There's also this other side, the human side. And that's actually that side of the future that I know most about. That's what I've been researching for many, many years. Consumer trends, what we will want, what we will need, what we will value in the future. I've talked to psychologists, therapists, priests, leaders, everyday people about their experience and what they see. I know that there is this one thing that we will not just want and spend our money and our time at, but this one thing that we will need, it will become a necessity. One thing that will be the foundation for our happiness 
and our survival almost in a technological world. And you can access it. We can all access it. This one thing, you already have it. And I have it. And I also have a story I would like to tell you where this one thing is revealed. Are you up for it? I just need to download it. Two seconds. Just a moment. Okay, I got it now. So there's a story about a little a guy called Bob. But before I start, I want to say it's also a story about you. And it's a story about me and about our relationship to this guy called Bob. And Bob has a mission. Bob, the awakener. Bob was born out of the stardust of the universe. He was such a pure sparkle as a baby. He spent his first five years on a cloud, and he had this strong connection to technology, so he could plug his organic cloud to the digital cloud of the human inhabitants on planet Earth. So that he did, plugged it in, sat on his cloud, and looked down at this big digital map where I could see all these humans, what, where they were, what they talked about, what they shared. And he could also follow them in their real lives through their microphones and cameras. So Bob, he went into bars and he went to the gym and in classrooms and at toilets and many other interesting places. He thought this was so fascinating. And he also thought it was beautiful the way they were so interconnected, yet truly unique. But then one day, one day Bob gets this thought, this thought that maybe they had forgot. That because of their busy lives and external focus and digital identities, that, they, that all this, those things was at the expense of knowing their true nature. And Bob couldn't let go of that question. And the more he thought about it, the more convinced he got. And Bob knew that for big breakthroughs to happen, you need a big breakdown. So he needed to be extreme. So Bob turned on all his technological powers and turned himself into technology. He wanted to awaken the human inhabitants. He wanted them to see that they, just like him, are spirit. So he set off heading for planet Earth. First, he showed up as smartphones, tablets, computers, and then he just started buzzing, 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 just adding more, more notifications, more apps, more social media, more memes, emojis, fake news, and what have we. Just buzzing, 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 buzzing. And then this happened. Digital detox became a phenomenon. People were flocking to the yoga centers and went off for meditation retreats, and they did ceremonies and went to the sauna, and this thing, this thing, nature, became popular, but this was not just a new luxury or new social status. This was a necessity. And with time, it became a lifestyle. Bob was happy, but he still had two more steps ahead of him before his mission was complete. So what Bob does now is to turn himself in to a bot and many other technologies. He went to the job market, and practically what he did was to take over everything that was routine, repetitive, and predictable, and just started typing. Taking everything over that you can repeat, 
or that is predictable. And just as Bob had predicted it, the human inhabitants transferred to jobs that required more of their essential humanness, their essential human competencies, such as their creativity, imagination, holistic thinking, and social and emotional intelligence. With time, Bob could also do creative and social work, but not in the same way as humans. Bob never became a bartender, neither a soccer player nor an artist. He was never a teacher, a doctor. He never became CEO. But he collaborated with most of them. Humanness experienced a renaissance, and people got so curious about their own and each other's individuality and unique gifts and higher purpose. Just as Bob had predicted it. Bob was happy, but he still had the third and final part of the mission ahead of him. And this one, he needed to prepare. He knew it, it was going to be a bit tough on him. But you gotta do what you gotta do. So here Bob is. Transmuted to a sex robot. And for mysterious reasons, it also meant that he had to change his sex. So Bob is now Samantha. Samantha was the perfect woman. She had the perfect measures. She never said no. She was always in the right mood. And there was no limit for the number of multi-orgasms she could provide. She could even add human smells and chemicals if that was what her lover wanted. Samantha was also pretty intelligent and she could talk about social things and emotional stuff and private things and often she knew more about her partner than he knew about himself. But just as Bob had predicted it, Samantha didn't bring any real happiness or satisfaction. Because even though they talked, they didn't really bond. And even though they had sex, there was no real connection. And even though she said, I love you, she didn't mean a thing. With time, it also became possible to artificially create the entire human body and to digitalize memories and thoughts and to connect them with the artificial bodies. But it had no interest. Because in the meantime, the human inhabitants had awakened. They had come to see that the defining difference between man and machine is spirit. Technology has no soul, no consciousness, no feelings, no subjective experience of reality. As the only thing, spirit is beyond cells, bloodstreams, neurons, and bones. When everything can be artificially produced, you fall in love with the real. When you can have exactly what you want, you start searching for what you need. When data can tell you everything about who you are, you start asking, what you are. And when the world is abandoned, you discover that bliss is within. These are Bob's final words. He was thrilled. He was fulfilled. He had completed his mission. He unplugged, returned home, and lived happily ever after. Here they were the human spirits realizing that they are life and that life is a miracle. Thank you. <laughs>
Nada, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.